Right, well, welcome back troops. Now I've spent most of this week outdoors in most of this weather at work. And I've been out this morning with the dog, got soaking wet and freezing cold, so I'm spending the rest of the day indoors. And the project today will be using the tarred jute twine sent to me by Mad Dog Survival and I'm going to use it to reinforce the joints on my pack frame because I used my pack frame to carry heavy stuff like logs and at the moment containers full of waste oil for my waste oil burner experiments which aren't going too well at the moment but well enough to be worth keeping up. So it's a day indoors or the rest of the day will be indoors anyway and that's what we're going to be about. So then troops, the situation is I've received <coughs> this jute twine from Mad Dog Survival. I'll show you a close-up of it. The, the phone I thought had, the phone I thought had lost, then the phone I thought was broken, but now actually works. So let's have a look. So this is the Duke Twine from Mad Dog Survival and I don't know whether you can read that but Mad Dog Survival has a very good YouTube channel and he also sells bushcraft material on eBay and I'm, I'm not a salesperson or spokesman for him but he's a good friend of mine and every now and again he sends me some bits and pieces. So, what am I going to use this jute, this tarred jute twine for? First of all, why would you tar jute twine? This is jute twine. Why would you tar it? Well, you would tar it for the same reasons that they tarred the standing rigging on the old ships to make it last longer. Not only will it make it last longer, um, because as we all know, if jute, jute twine on its own is, is very biodegradable, and this doesn't stop this, this process of degrading altogether, but it massively retards it. Not only that, but it sticks the fibres together, so it makes it stronger as well. So I'm going to use it on my pack frame uh, and <clears throat> some of you will know what this is a pack frame, a frame I wear on my back as a rucksack. Uh, these are the straps on my back and then they come through and I can tie them around my front like a waist strap as well. And it's not a traditional pack frame. Uh, it's a modified, I started with three sticks, literally three sticks and bramble twines and I've progressed from there to so this is made out of dressed wood, actually old furniture wood. But I use this for carrying logs on, sit the logs on there, tie them on and I don't have to worry about busting my rucksack. Uh, and I also have used it for carrying containers of waste oil on that somebody's dumped and this is spilt waste oil, this black on it. Fully functional. But what I want to use the twine for is reinforcing these joints on it. Now these joints on it are just, um, what do they call them, um, halving joints where you cut into the pieces of wood so that slot more or less flush together. More or less flush, this is just a quick ready example I knocked up. 
uh, and I've glued those joints so those are the joints that you see here those joints there I've glued them and up up to now they've been strong enough they haven't moved now traditionally what would happen with a joint like that was the the peg it as well use an awl to drill a hole in the center there and peg it with a wooden peg but you can also lash it do lashings so I could do two types of lashings on there I could do a cross lashing or the square lashing and there's plenty of videos on that but it's lashing timber and sticks and things you find outdoors is, is a very common thing to do just imagine these are two sticks two sticks and you want to form a tripod or a cross or you just build something you can use your saw little saw any saw cut some notches in there so that they're already have got some stability to them and then you can wrap cordage around just to secure them and then you can lash it and then frap it so you lash one way and then frap around them lashings just to tighten them lashings up and you'll get a very sturdy um, structure make your, your bed or your camp or whatever out of it anyway so that's what I'm going to use it for I haven't, I haven't really opened it yet uh, so we're going to open it we'll expect it to smell a little and it's it smelled a lot stronger than this when I first got it I've had it for about two months and I've not used it so the tar is fairly volatile I don't know how he made the tar uh, but tar is a fairly volatile thing hence the smell and hence you can expect a slight bit of the tar coming off onto you so there are some downsides but obviously they are uh, they're worth it right I don't know how he's tied this there will be one end the longest end is usually your working end it's not that end there will be some trick to how he's tied it but as I don't know what that trick is ah uh, there we go I think yeah there we go okay there we go right so the, the camera cut off as the camera that I'm using the, the uh, keeps doing uh, I think it's because, because DSLR cameras are not designed for uh, long term videoing they're designed for taking pictures so one of these days I will invest in a proper camera but uh, this is just a hobby uh, not a money pit so here we go then and my hands are staying reasonably clean although as I say this is two months I've had this about two months it takes me a while to get round to things so what I'm going to do then is I'm going to do some <coughs> square lashing on my pack frame just around here now for those that have never lashed before uh, let's take a let's take a a good bit off a working bit off so we don't get all tangled up <clears throat> now then <clears throat> on this first joint here we'll do a square lashing I think the first thing you need to do is tie off your cordage there's loads of ways you could tie off your cordage uh, you could do a cloth hitch or you could do a, a timber hitch or you could in fact do a square knot 
<laughs> the square knot with your square lashing. I think we're going to do a uh, we'll do a clove hitch, I think. I could do actually with uh, there's some bits of glue in the way there, which I could file down a bit, make it a bit smoother on the uh, cordage. Taking the rough, the rough edges of the glue off. Right, because I want the job I want the job to last. <clears throat> right, so I'm gonna do a clove hitch. So we all know a clove hitch, don't we? Clove hitch isn't hard. So we just wrap it round and then it sort of crosses over itself and then comes up there like that. I'm not here to explain a clovage. Right, so if this pops off, it's going to want to pop off out this way. So I want to go up there and around the back. Down there. Keep in tension on it all the time. Back up there, around the back, down there. Now, to some extent, another advantage on this uh, tarred bank line is it sticks to itself or it would do if it wasn't it wasn't so cold up here I don't know whether you can see what I'm doing or not uh, let's try and bring another camera in right so you get the gist we're going around the front around the back, around the front, I'm keeping tension on all the time, around the back, around the front, around the back, back down the front and you want at least, depending on the thickness of the cordage and what your tensions are going to be on it but you want at least three, at least three layers on it. I'm going to end up with about six here. And they are, even though it's not heavily tarred, they are sort of sinking in and sticking to each other. Okay so I reckon I've got enough on there now so how I'm going to tie this off is I'm just going to put a double overhand knot so that's once and then instead of pulling it tight I go around once again and then I pull it, oh that's, <laughs> the reason you do two is to put more friction so it doesn't undo when you're doing this, the second knot to hold it but because it's tarred bank line there's enough friction in it there so even though I've only got the one overhand knot on now it's not going to come undone not anytime soon anyway 
but I'm going to put another one on and turn it into a square knot. Right now that will just lie, that loose end will lie up there. I'll cut this one off. In fact I'll cut that one off as well. Cut it off. I'm just making sure it is pulled tight. Cut that off. Right, so I don't know whether you can hear that. That's my thumbs sort of sticking to it and it has brought off a bit of tar onto my thumbs. But that's understandable seeing as I'm pushing into it. So all them fibres now are gluing together. So that's how I'm going to do the other three I think. I was going to do some cross. Well let's do, a, let's do cross ones on the top. So I'll do one more on the top. So I need another length of bank line. Now, So this isn't waste now. This small amount's not waste. That can go in my fire starting kit. And uh, in fact, let's not talk about things. Let's do things. So let's, um, let's just see how well it burns, shall we? Right, so here goes then. Quite often, if you're fire starting and you've built your little uh, tinder and kindling fire, you, you can't get in there with your lighter to light it. You want something to take a, a more sustainable and larger flame into the fire. So maybe this will be it. Maybe if we twined a bit together, we might be able to make a bit of a bit of a candle. Let's just see. <laughs> I'm indoors by the way. Uh, <laughs> I have got plenty of water on hand uh, but uh, starting fires indoors is not a recommended practice. So now I can use that, now I can use this to take to my tinder. It is burning. I could use it as a candle or a spill, as a spill. So that's quite good and uh, it's got quite a bit of burn time to it. So you can definitely use it as a, an aid to fire starting. It's quite brittle this glue that I've used. That's what I'm uh, concerned enough to put the lashings on for because the glue may at some point just, just all crack and it fall to pieces. Right so we're going to go for a timber hitch. So I'm just wrapping it round. So I wrap back. I want, I want a bit of spare as well. So I've wrapped it round itself and then I do at least five turns on here. One, two, three, for because it's so slippy, I, I would uh, sticky. I would think uh, three turns are probably adequate, and then I can cinch that up. And then I'm just going to go diagonally. So I'm going to go round. I'm pulling it fairly tight but not too tight. I mean this stuff isn't like paracord. I would think, in fact we'll do a, that's another thing we'll do, we'll do a, a snap test in a minute to uh, see just what it takes to break it. 
so now we'll go around the other way so I'm just crossing over and we'll come around this way I might have taken off a bit a lot more than I need here a lot more So that's one thing you do get is plenty of this stuff. I've got it. You do get plenty of it. When we do the snap test in a minute, you've got to bear in mind that uh, it's not nylon. It's it's a natural fibre, and it's not made as consistently as what paracord would be or bank line even I believe bank line's nylon could be wrong right so you can sort of press it down and press it into itself and it grips very well. Let's cut this off here. And let's just once again just tie it off. I could I could have left a bit more on this loose end and just tied it off in a clove hitch. But we're gonna just tie it off in a square knot. Then we're going to cut it. <clears throat> right, so then I've tied up two um, square lashings, two cross lashings. I've got quite a bit left over uh, for fire lighting. And I've still only used probably less than half of it. So I've still got just over half left. So there's this, this good bit here as well. So I've got quite a bit, well over I would say, what, what does it say on the sheet? I haven't measured it but it says 50 foot minimum. You can guarantee you're going to get 50 foot minimum. But I'm not, a, I'm not an advertisement for um, for Andy of Mad Dog Survival. I'm just a bushcrafter, a keen bushcrafter. And you only learn by actually getting your hands dirty. So I'm very thankful to Andy for sending me this. And when you're doing bushcraft, you've got to remember bushcraft is something that you should be able to go out in the environment and do it yourself, not buy it from a shop. And we can all make twine or cordage as tedious as we know it is if we've tried making it except if you can get some uh, th there are some plants that uh, especially roots that uh, provide ready-made cordage and with some some degree of success brambles as well will give you a ready cordage as long as you don't think you've got a, a, a synthetic rope in your hands and you use it correctly. Right so one thing we haven't tried yet is the snap test. So let's just uh, remember there'll be weak points in jute cordage. It's not as uh, quality controlled as what modern cordages are. But let's just give it a go so we know what we're dealing with. I should have done this first so I know how hard to pull on the on the line. But uh, <laughs> it's starting to cut into my fingers now. <sighs> all right, all right. Without gloves, I can't take it any further. Uh, I'll tell you what we will do. We'll put it round here. We'll put a timber hitch on it 
I'll wrap it round once, twice, three, four turns. I'll tension it up, I'll cut a bit off. I'll wrap it round here, another timber hitch. Oh no, we'll just do a clove hitch. We'll just do a clove hitch. I won't, I won't wrap it round there, I'll wrap it round. Okay, so I can adjust that. Okay, so now I can apply a bit of force greater than what my fingers can withstand. So we'll just see what it takes to snap it. Uh, when it snaps, some it's going to go. It's a lot stronger than I thought it would be. Uh, what I'm thinking is I'm putting enough force into it so that when it does snap, something, a lot of it, a lot of movement is going to occur. Let's just get things stabilised. Let's put these knife blades away before we have an incident. Right. Let's put our back into it. Obviously we will be able to snap this. But let's just see how much force we use. Considerable. And, and it snapped where the, where it wrapped around the, um, the timber hitch. So it snapped at the loop of the timber hitch. And I, I'll always say this, when you get the breaking strain of cordage, once you start tying knots in cordage, that can reduce the breaking strain by up to 50% because the cordage is going around a sharp corner and the, the, the tensions are not even through the through the fibres of the cordage but I am well impressed with that right so let's not get over too impressed uh, just one final thing I want to say uh, my videos always drag on but you know there's lots of little details in them and now this is on my pack frame and at least this thing won't um, do a, uh, what, what do they call it, uh, rapid unscheduled disassembly, a rud. This will not rapidly unscheduled disassemble. Now I've got these, um, these lashings on. It, there's a method of frapping which would tighten lashings up but it won't really work because I've cross half the joints. I could put wedges under there if I wanted to tighten these these cordages up but I'm not going to do that. What I might do if I feel I need to is I'm going to make some um, pine pitch glue. Pine pitch glue. I've got all the ingredients here. I've got charcoal. I've got dried rabbit droppings. And I've got the main ingredient, which is what I want this can for, which is pine resin. Now there's dry pine resin in there, and in these other two, I've got sticky pine resin. But that's a video for a future project, uh, for when I get round to it. So that really concludes this video, and this video was about... Mad Dog Survival, Tard, Jute, Twine. Is it any good? Well, in my opinion, I think it's marvellous. And uh, the only way you learn, really, is to get your hands dirty. And this will get your hands slightly dirty. Slightly dirty. Although it's a natural, healthy dirtiness. So that's it there then, the jute twine from uh, Mad Dog Survival. So what does it say, traditional tarred jute cordage, 50 feet minimum, and I have to say, 
uh, I've received a few of his things and he's always very generous. Right, used since the 1700s, probably used long, long before that. Ideal for bushcraft projects, also makes ideal fire lighting tinder, well of course it will because the tar will be flammable and so will the dupe twine itself. Uh, so also makes ideal fire lighting tinder, bushcraft survival and camping. For more info please visit my YouTube channel at Mad Dog Survival. So it comes from nature and it will go back to nature. Fantastic, I've still got half of it left and this shall be in my fire lighting kit. So that concludes another video. Uh, and to be honest, I, I enjoy doing this and I do it for my own learning. Uh, I'm learning stuff uh, from other people. But you only really learn by practicing. So that's what we're doing, we're practicing. So I'll say ta da, and I'll see you in a week or two weeks. But I will be back, uh, possibly with my um, pine pitch glue. Um, that'd be a good one. And that's what I'm gearing up for, pine pitch glue. Uh, because if you wanted to really cement your, your bindings or your, your uh, lashings, you could put a bit of, put a bit of um, pitch pine glue on it. Or fix your arrow heads to your sticks or whatever you want to do. Anyway, I'd like to test that out, see how usable it is. Uh, rather than the uh, modern version, which is Harold Eyed. Right, that's it then, I'll catch you later on.